Density is a property that can help us to select the right material for a job. So let's say you have a tank of gasoline, which has a density of 0.72 grams per cubic centimeter. It's 72% as dense as water, much less dense than water. So if we want something to float on gasoline, um, it's going to have to have a pretty low density, like fiberglass or cork or styrofoam. Things that we would think of as being um, typically something that would float are not necessarily going to float on gasoline, like ice or butter, because they are more dense than the gasoline. So you can float or sink in anything. We just typically think of floating and sinking in water, like vegetable oil floats on water, but would sink in gasoline. So not only with floating and sinking in liquids, density can also help us decide what substance to use for an application. Like if you want a mountain bike that you can pick up and carry because you're gonna go mountain biking in some like crazy places with some streams and boulders that you're gonna have to get around, you're gonna want every cubic centimeter of that bike to weigh as little as possible. So a substance like aluminum or scandium would be a really good choice for you. But in contrast, if you're a scuba diver and you need to put weights on so that you can make yourself more dense so that you will sink into the ocean, you're gonna want the smallest weights possible that have the most mass in every cubic centimeter like lead. Then if you're trying to build an airplane, you're going to want a material that's going to, again, make every cubic centimeter as light as possible to make getting that plane up in the air as easy as possible. So you're gonna to want to choose a substance like aluminum to build your plane out of because it has a low gram per centimeter measurement. So if we're looking historically at choices to uh, build a boat out of, we could have a substance like wood, which has a density of 0.43 grams per cubic centimeter. So that means that it's gonna float with about 43% of its mass underwater. And so you can put a lot of stuff on a wooden boat and it's still going to continue to float. Steel, on the other hand, seems like a strange choice to make a boat out of because it has a density 8.37. It's over eight times more dense than water. And so your best choice is going to be wood. But then how do we make metal ships that float? So to show you, I wanna give you this example with some plastic. So here's a plastic piece. One cube has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter, or sorry, 1.04 grams. So 10 cubes has 10 times more mass, right? Um, but it still has the same density because it's proportional. 10 times more mass, 10 times more volume. And here I have a tens piece. So let's drop them both in water. Well, the single cube 1.04 is more dense than water, but the tens cube floats. What's going on? Well, when we find the mass of that tens cube, it only has a mass of 5.53 grams, which means that its density is 0.55 grams per cubic centimeter. But how did that happen? <gasps> oh my goodness, there's air trapped inside. They hollowed it out. And so that helps us to see that if we had a substance like aluminum, which a big chunk sinks and a little chunk sinks, if we take a piece of aluminum foil and put it in water, <gasps> it floats as well. And even if I ball it up, it still floats. And even if I ball it tighter, it still floats. And so if I want to get it to sink, I'm gonna have to get it really compacted in there. And now that mass is compacted, it will sink. But this other piece will float. And so the key that people figured out was that if we want things that are made of substances that are more dense than water to float, then we have to hollow them out. And so if we take a metal ship and we make very thin sheets of metal and spread that metal out over large volumes, then the total mass of the ship divided by the total volume, all that space that it takes up, which is largely gonna be filled with air, is gonna be less than one gram per cubic centimeter. And then the boat will float.